What's up everyone? This week I'm bringing you this beautiful but totally outdated buffet and I'm going to give it a really good and fresh makeover. The first thing we have to do with this piece is give it a really good clean. That is how we start every project. What I'm using here is crud cutter. So I'm just going to spray it all over outside and inside and just give it a really good wash. I'm also going to remove this hardware and I think I'm going to replace it because this is a very 80s hardware and I have some different plans for this piece. Nasty, gross, stinky. And it says Broy Hill, which supposed to be a good furniture. But this is definitely the 80s piece. And we're gonna bring it to 2023. In a few months, 2024. I am done cleaning this piece, it was very nasty. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is let it dry all day today and tomorrow that is what I love to do with my pieces. I love to clean them one day before I paint them. That way I know there is no uh, humidity trapped onto the wood. So I'm going to leave the door open for this piece to air out. Uh, it doesn't really smell bad, it just smells like old and we definitely have to change all of that. So we will be back, like I'm going somewhere. I'll be back in 30 seconds. Now that my piece is all nice and dry and clean, which is very important a step, I can start painting. And I will be using Anislon Coco and Anislon Medium Brush. This is going to be my base color. So I'm just going to go and paint in every which direction and then uh, once that is dry, I'm going to keep on layering some other colors. All right, let's start. On I am going in every which direction. It doesn't have to look pretty. All we are trying to do now is just uh, give it one coat so we can keep on playing. What I'm doing here is, as I said, painting in every which direction. This is a traditional chalk painting way where you just go in any, dire any direction you want. And this cocoa color is a gorgeous neutral color. The way I avoid lots of mess uh, when I'm painting, a uh, mess around me and mess on me is by dipping my brush just a little bit in the paint. Uh, you don't need a lot, you just need a little bit and it goes a long way. So that is definitely something you should have in mind when painting furniture. I'm just going to go over and paint the door inside. This is something um, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't do, but I feel like this piece needs a door painted as well. So I'm just going to give it a nice coat of cocoa on the inside as well.
Now that my first coat is completely dry, I am going to add some pink color to this. And I'm using this very soft pink called Antoinette by Annie Sloan. And what I have here is Annie Sloan uh, flat brushes. So I'm going to do some blending uh, by tapping, but using these flat brushes. And I'm going to show you how. I just wanted to create a layered look. Uh, I want the majority of the color to be on it, but just with some uh, low lights around the corners using cocoa. So I'm just going to play and have fun. I want this piece to be very artistic. Uh, and then after that, I'm going to add some decoupage paper. So I have this idea in my head. Now I just have to make it happen. So the first thing I'm going to do is start adding cocoa. And I am tapping because tapping just gives me better coverage um, and also gives me some kind of texture. Uh, this piece is not in perfect shape. It has some imperfe imperfections. So uh, I love to add a little bit of texture to my pieces. It adds way more character to it. So I'm just going with cocoa right now and then I'm going to introduce the Antoinette color to it. All right, now that I have my cocoa on, we are going with Antoinette and I, for that I will be using this flat brush, the small flat brush. And all I'm going to do is start adding some pink by tapping. And the reason I'm using a flat brush for this instead of a regular chalk paint bristle brush is because the flat brush gives me a less um, separation. The blend looks smoother. So I'm just highlighting this area here right now. And I'm just tapping until I feel like it's nicely blended. Okay, and now I'm going to go with some cocoa around it. And for that, I'm using uh, the large brush. You can use small as well, but I just grab large one, so it's totally fine. And I have some cocoa on it, and now I'm going to go around to add more depth. And again, with pink. So when it comes to blending, it's a lot of going back and forth. You just have to fill it out and blend until you feel it's nicely blended and it looks organic. Okay, and now I'm just going to keep doing the same thing around the door. This is where I'm planning to do uh, the decoupage paper once I'm done blending. So I'm not really worried about this section here. I'm just doing the blend anyway, uh, but it doesn't really have to be perfect because I'm going to cover this with 
the decoupage paper, but I still want to have a nice background. And then go a little bit with the cocoa to blend everything nicely. And it's hard really to see on the camera, but once this dries nicely, you will see a nice separation in colors, nothing too much. Everything is going to look nicely blended and even, but you will be able to see more of pink in it and more of dark areas from Coco. So now we're going to just repeat this all over the piece. When it comes to blend, it's all about the feeling. So the more you do blending, the better you're going to get and the more feeling you're going to have for it. It's something that it's not hard, but it definitely takes practice. So don't be discouraged uh, on blending. And if you try blending and it doesn't come out good, don't be discouraged, uh, go practice. I always tell people, practice, practice, practice first before you go onto the big piece. Uh, because I know if you see me blend and it comes out so easy, it looks easy, it comes out good, you go and you give it a try on a big piece of furniture and it doesn't come out the same, you get discouraged. So instead of doing that, just go practice on anything, on something small and you will uh, feel it. One day it will just click and you will feel it and it might be your favorite technique or might not. It's not my favorite, so just say. <laughs> Now that I'm done with the bottom part of my piece, I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the top and on the sides. So I am going to apply cocoa by tapping first, then I am going with a flat brush, tapping Antonet into it to create layers. And then I'm going to go again, one more time around the edges using cocoa. So it's lots of layering and it's lots of going back and forth. Your brush is going to hold a lot of chalk paint. So if you uh, find yourself having a hard time uh, with your brush, all you can do is, all you have to do is just spray a little bit of water and it will keep on going nice. Uh, for this kind of technique, when you're doing a tapping, I definitely suggest you use your older chalk paint brushes because tapping is kind of damaging to your brushes. So I have my brushes that are brand new and I uh, don't use them for tapping. Okay. One thing you will notice here, I grab a bigger a brush. It's still flat, but it's a bigger one because I just want to go faster. A small brush is great for detail work, but I just need to go fast. And also another thing you will notice, I'm using a very old brush. so. As I said, for the tapping technique, you definitely want to use your old brushes that you don't care about, there is something wrong with them. And I always start from the center and then I just keep spreading. So just go, keep going light. Now that my paint is dry, I took a look at this piece and I saw that I created a stone finish. This was not my intention, but I absolutely love it. What I really love about this piece is that it's giving me very calm vibes and that's what I need. When I need to calm myself down, I just create a calmer piece. This is very unusual because I usually go with bold and bright colors, but sometimes when I need to calm myself down, I just create a calm piece of furniture. And now it was time for decoupaging. Unfortunately, we lost the audio during the filming this part, but I am going to walk you through everything. I will be using a new decoupage paper from Redesign with Prima. What is so special about this new 
decoupage paper is that you get three different designs that go with each other in one package. This one is called Old World Charm. I really love how it looks and I think it's a perfect match for this piece. It has a little bit of distressing, a little bit of flowers, but the best part is that it's really matching this color that I created. So I definitely picked this paper on purpose because I think it's just a perfect match for this buffet. I measured my areas where I wanted to decoupage, so I wanted to make sure that I have enough of this paper. I only wanted to use one paper and I want the design to be the same on each door. So for that, I grab my measuring tape, I measure everything, and once I realize that I will have exactly enough with one paper, I was able to start decoupaging. The reason I was measuring is because I only had one paper, so there was no space for any mistakes, because if I made a mistake, then I don't have extra paper, and I will have it next week, but not today when I need it. At first, I wanted to cut individually each part for each door, but then I remember there is a different way to do this and I'm going to show you how without having to measure and cut because sometimes when I'm cutting my decoupage paper, it comes off sideways uh, and as I said, there is no space for mistakes. I exactly need this paper as much as I have it. So let me show you a different way. When decoupaging, first we need to apply a decoupage gel so our paper can stick onto the surface. And when applying a decoupage gel, feel free to put a lot. It won't hurt your paper, uh, but if you don't put enough, that can be an issue. So always it's good to put lots of decoupage gel. Once I had a good amount of gel, I added the paper. Then I grabbed a 100 grit sandpaper and started removing the rest of the paper. This is exactly measurements that I need, so there is no waste. That's why I was doing it this way. When sanding your paper, you just want to go light. So I find 100 paper to be just all right. If you use 80 grit, it can damage the rest of your paper. If you use uh, 220, it's too light and I find myself sanding it for a really long time. I sand it around the edges and all we have left to do is apply decoupage gel again to protect our paper. To get rid of the wrinkles, I was using a syringe wrap. Uh, so I just went over my paper, got rid of wrinkles and any air bubbles and I was ready to put again decoupage gel to protect the paper. And now I just repeated the process on each drawer. Apply the gel, put the paper, sand it off, get rid of wrinkles and bubbles and protect it. So it's pretty simple. This way of decoupaging, it looks complicated, but believe me, it's not. This way you don't get any waste, you get exact perfect measurements and it just looks complicated. So don't be afraid to try it. But if you think it's too complicated, uh, just feel free to go a traditional way where you measure everything and cut it and make sure you cut it correctly. It's all about what makes you feel good and comfortable you, not me. And this makes me feel comfortable, so I did it this way, but if you want to cut, measure, cut, measure, cut, you go and do that way. We're all different and that is a beautiful thing. Now that my decoupage paper is completely dry, I'm going to protect everything and also I am going to add some dark wax for some aging because that's what I love to do and I think this piece is calling for some dark wax. So we're going with clear wax, dark wax, and then we're going to add some more stuff later on.
as I told you earlier, my decoupage paper is already protected, but I am going to put clear wax on top of it anyway. That way everything can look the same color because decoupage gel, matte decoupage gel, gives you a little different finish than a clear wax. So for that reason, I'm putting clear wax on top of it. It won't hurt your decoupage gel. Uh, it's just going to blend in the color better. While my clear wax is still wet, I'm going directly with a brown wax, dark wax. Uh, I wanted to age everything, but I just decided in last moment to go around the edges and just age the decoupage paper. And I'm just going to put a little bit of brown wax. And now I'm going to grab a towel and wipe it off. So it just looks uh, faded and just a little bit of dark shading going on here. And then I'm just going to repeat the process if I feel that I need a little bit of more aging. And now for a touch of glam, we're going to use a vintage gold by Rezan with Prima gilding wax. I'm going to uh, add this around the trim. Um, and I think this is going to give a beautiful touch to this piece. I'm going to do that with a little brush. You can do this with your fingers, but today I just feel like doing it with a brush. I gilded all around the edges here, these little details here. Uh, so I'm pretty just, pretty much just going wherever I feel like it looks good. Uh, there is no wrong or right here. Uh, just have fun with it. Gilding is always fun to me and I haven't done this much gilding in a while because I've been gold leafing. But I really love how this vintage gold looks with this look. So I'm just going around. So this is, the, this is the new hardware that I got from Amazon and I really love it, but they didn't have in gold. So I'm just going to uh, put the hardware on and then I'm going to gild it while it's on. It's much easier. I find it much easier to do it that way.
And we're done with this piece. I absolutely love it how it turned out. It's so calming and relaxing and it can go in anybody's home and it can match any colors. I envision it in some living room under a big TV, like a big TV stand, but really it can serve so many purposes. I really love everything about it and this is what I needed, one calm piece and I really love how it came out. you like this video if you did give me a thumbs up leave a comment below and subscribe if you haven't already i will see you next time with a new project and more ideas bye guys